All right, welcome back to the channel. So, Q and A time, Streetcar Joe Q and A. Uh, did a post, did a video, lots of stuff. So here we go. By far. The biggest question, or not the biggest, but the most asked question was methanol. What, uh, what does it take to do methanol? Tuning for methanol, cooling for methanol, everything. So we're just, we're gonna go over from the start and I'll put some B-roll in here, hopefully, to try to do the methanol highlights. But main thing I do on methanol is uh, mechanical fuel pump. That kind of starts it off. Electric fuel pumps, high horsepower, Debatable, yeah, you could run a bunch of electrical fuel pumps, but there gets to a point where you need a lot of fuel. Mechanical is the only way to get there. So I actually have a pulley set up on the front for my fuel pump, and then it runs a thick cable, it's a Waterman cable, big old guy, that runs all the way to the back, and my fuel pump's mounted in the back. I'll show you some pictures as I kind of talk about this of the cable and the fuel pump. And then I have a big tank in the back too. It's uh, 10 gallons, maybe a little more. So what happens, is the fuel pump is behind the fuel tank. So as I'm launching, you know, the G-forces are taking that fuel and kind of guiding them to the pump. And then I got a big old line that comes up, splits, goes to two good filters, splits again, and comes up to my rails. I actually have four rails on this car, 16 injectors. Um, they're 16 Bosch 210s. They, uh, they'll flow tons of fuel. My base pressure is actually pretty normal, like 60 PSI. I know a lot of people run really high base pressure with methanol. I'm not there yet. Um, 16 Bosch 210s, and you know, I think people can support 2,500 plus horsepower on that kind of combination. My fuel pump, it's not huge. It's like a 14, 15 gallon um, per hour per minute, per hour. I don't know, one of those. Um, fuel pump back there. So it's not, you know, crazy size either. I know a lot of people go way too big on their fuel pump, whatever. Um, but a lot of people ask cooling system as well. Like, why do you got a radiator if you're on methanol? Um, Streetcar, duh. But no, seriously, so uh, radiator in the back on this car. You notice it's not up front here. It's all the way in the back. But yeah, I run a huge radiator with two big old fans, and this allows me to go cruising still, and the temps stay super low so I can run the methanol setup actually really lean idling and cruising and get pretty good gas mileage believe it or not because I got an awesome cooling system a lot of guys race cars that are on methanol don't have a cooling system and they run the methanol really fat to keep the motor cool when they're idling so they can go make their pass I'm kind of the opposite street car I run it really lean and then I um, you have a cooling system to handle the heat. So it works out. Um, tuning is harder on methanol. The window is smaller, I feel like. It's easier to tear stuff up. Um, head gaskets or fire slotting stuff. Like, there's no joke. Methanol, methanol is harder to tune, but you don't have to have an intercooler, so it's lighter weight. Um, tank in the back versus tank up at the front. That's kind of where I was talking about the, I like the G-forces to take it back to the pump. Um, and I've got a big old gas tank. I can't put a 10 gallon tank up here in the front. A lot of methanol cars you see that have a tank up front, the four gallon tanks or whatnot, those are race cars. They only need to start up, get to temperature, make a pass, they shut it down, they tow it back to the lanes, and then they have a tank up front, and then their pump is like right behind the tank. So it, you know, the G force just takes it into the pump and then it pumps it up to the things. Being that mine's all the way in the back, I can't have a tank up here and try to feed it in the back, or vice versa, I can't have a pump up here and my tank in the back, because then how do I get the fuel to the pump accurately? So that's kind of why I have it set up like it is. Um, but yeah, I love methanol. But to be honest, for a street car, it's the best move I made. I've had plenty of cars before this on race gas and E85 and all this stuff. You know, a lot of people tell you methanol is not a street gas, street car gas, whatever. It's the best fuel I've done. I can make long cruises, stays cool, crisp throttle response, burns the eyes. It's it's awesome. I love methanol. Be best thing I ever did to a street car was put it on meth. All right, so probably the next biggest question I got. Not, why do I keep saying biggest? The next most asked question I got was suspension. 
Rear suspension, front suspension, suspension all together. So we'll just kind of go over real quick. It's pretty simple, to be honest. Um, the shocks are sand huffs all the way around. Fronts are, you know, strut style coil over. Uh, then the backs are a coil over style. I mean, really, that's, that's kind of it. The fronts are, uh, you know, kind of a built-in drop spindle. So the front gets that super low ride height. Uh, I have them, you know, we've kind of worked, I've worked back and forth with Sam Huff, sent them back, had them revalved and updated, and it's their radial style um, valving in them. But the things are amazing, like, really, really good. I have shock sensors all the way around, so I can keep track of, you know, what's going on. Rear suspension, you know, it's a TRZ rear end, it's a 9 inch, um, TRZ anti-roll bar. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty well just off the shelf stuff. It works really good. Uh, the sand house, I credit everything to the, the shocks. I don't even have to use the limiters on the front and my weight bias is not ideal. Uh, I don't have a radiator up front and all that heavy weight up front. Aluminum motor, you know, this truck motor doesn't weigh a lot. So all my weight's in the back of this car, but on radial prep, I still go crazy fast to the 60 foot. So, I credit all that to the suspension. I don't have to use my limiters in the front. I can control the front end movement with the front shocks. It doesn't shoot up really quick and upset the suspension. I can keep it really tight, but give it a little bit of travel to get it going. Rear extension, you know, I control really good. I actually run the rear extension pretty tight, so I don't have a ton of it. Maybe against what a lot of people say, but it works out. And I'm light on the nose, I go fast as 60 foot, and it just works. And I think I'm actually gonna try some no prep stuff in this car this year, because the car's so heavy on the rear, I actually feel like it'd be set up pretty good for it. So I may try a local race or two that is no prep and see how it goes, but that, that's the basics on the suspension. It's really, it's really nothing crazy, pretty, pretty basic stuff. Milner One uh, had three questions. Uh, how big's my garage? Standard two car, 24 by 24, I believe it is. I got a little bump out over there where I do my welding. I think it's like three feet by eight feet where it's pushed out, so I get a little extra room, and then I got a little spot up here where my toolbox is. But it's a standard two car garage, 24 by 24. Uh, he also asked, can I get my hood on and off by myself? Yeah, piece of cake. Um, it's got Zeus fasteners. It's a light hood, so I, you know, I'm a big guy. I can grab the outside edges and just pick up and take it on nothing to it um you see right now like so when i take the front end off like this i'll take the hood off and then i'll take the bumper off and then i'll take the factory fenders yes they're actually metal fenders but then i'll take those off separately and the fenders are actually zeus fastened to the body so they actually come off really easy and then there's bolts that hold the uh bumper to the fenders it's, it's all pretty easy and then yes where i store the hood I store it inside the house. Um, the wife is, yeah, she's very forgiving, I should say, because I got fenders, hood, bumper for my car in there right now. And then that car, I have fenders, hood, bumper, roof, and all sorts of stuff, doors. Uh, so yeah, no, she's, uh, she puts up with a lot. I have a lot of stuff in the house right now. I should store somewhere else. My Trans Am, I had some hooks up here and I actually stored the hood up there. I need to figure something out for the Mustang so I can put it up there. Um, so I quit putting car parts inside the house. All right, Jet Tech 1041 asked my background. Says I'm OCD, reminds of an engineer type. I was just talking to someone this the other day. I think if I would have been exposed to engineering at a young age, I would have done it, but I really wasn't exposed to it um, my high schools didn't offer it. I, I didn't take it. I don't know. I was always interested in computers. My dad was a computer programmer when I was growing up and hardware, he built computers. So I was always tinkering, building my own computers and learning how to do stuff at a young age. So I always liked computers. So I went to college for computer science um, and I did computer information systems. And I actually got a degree in computers. So I was, I'm a computer programmer. So that's what I do, IT, I sit at a desk and type on the computer all day long. Uh, also an OCD thing, like you gotta make sure everything's perfect as you're making your program. So it, it fits my brain really good. But that's also why I like to come out to the garage in the evenings is because I sit at a desk all day and stare at a screen. I don't wanna go home and sit on the couch and watch TV. Like I've stared at a screen all day. I wanna get out here, stand up, use my hands and do stuff in the garage. So it really helps balance my work, play time, really good being in IT for my day job.
Okay, Michael Carlton, I believe, asked about my detailing and uh, maintenance on my paint, which I, I'm sure everyone knows I'm super OCD on the cleanliness of my car. Uh, someone made a funny meme, uh, I'll put it here, of like if I'll have time to clean my car. So it, it's pretty funny, I'll put it here. But um, yeah, so no, I, I clean my car way too much. I polish it more than I should. Um, so I have um, one of those cheap, random orbital buffers it's not the nice Ru rupes or whatever those are it's um it's a cheap one i don't know it works good though and then i use lake county pads and then i'm a fan of the menzerna menzerna uh polishes and compounds i don't compound it much because it doesn't have a lot of defects it's just like swirl marks just from wiping it down at the track and stuff or someone resting their hand on it so I'll use their Menzerna 3500 polish, which is a real good polish to get out swirl marks, but then it shines up really good. So it's just a one stage correction I do quite a bit. I'm not a ceramic coating fan, I know, leave hate in the comments, but I just, um, with wiping it down all the time at the racetracks and stuff, I feel like a ceramic coating, you put more swirl marks in it than you would just paint. So I actually use a sealant wax combination. I use the Just Car Power Lock Plus as a sealant. Put that on there, that stuff's so good to wipe off. And then I use Colonite 845 uh, wax on top of that. And it, it leaves a good protection. It leaves the paint really slick. Um, I get that combination from Obsessed Garage. It's an OCD YouTube uh, guy that does the cleaning cars. I love that channel. But anyways, I, um, I get that from him. It works really good. I have the wax on top. And I feel like it leaves a good shine, leaves it really rich and black. And it offers some protection. So if you know brush up against this, not putting scratches in it. And then you know probably every six months to a year, I'm probably repolishing it and cleaning it up. Um, even more so if something gets on it or you know whatever it happens. I polish it way too often. Um, and then like in between, I'm just using a, a quick wax since it has a wax combination on it. Uh, you know, I use these, you know, Carnuba spray waxes that I'll spritz and quick detail. You know, if it gets really filthy and rained on or something, I'll use like an Adams waterless wash with the right towel. Um, and I like, you know, the super plush, the rag company towels that I use. Like, I'm pretty, I could probably start my whole channel on just cleaning my car because I do it so much. I love it. it it's like a secret a uh, passion of mine, clean cars. I, I, it's, it's therapeutic, I really like it. Um, you know, I use uh, wax on the wheels as well. I have a high temp wax that I use on the wheels to try to help keep them clean. I use a certain um, Adams vinyl rubber tire, the Adams VRT on my tires. It leaves a sheen, but it doesn't leave it greasy, so it doesn't get all over you if you, you know, handling one, but it leaves like kind of a matte sheen on it. looks really good. I, I could I could make a video forever on detailing. That's kind of the quick overview of what I do. Jerry, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name. Jerry asked about the radial sw radiator swirl tank. I actually got tons of these questions too on the radiator swirl tank. I don't know why that's such a big hit. I'll put some uh, footage here of my swirl tank. It's like one of those build together DIY swirl tanks. Um, I don't even know, it's like Tuff, T-U-F-F -F or something was the name of it. It's pretty cheap, um, they make a couple different sizes, but yeah, it's just kind of a build your own swirl tank. Um, a lot of people ask the purpose of the swirl tank, I mean, it's really just a fancy overflow. So it, you know, it fills up and holds a little bit and then it feeds down into the radiator. Radiator's got a pump on it, pumps to the front of the motor, circulates through the motor, comes back and comes into the swirl tank. It's just an overflow jug. It swirls it, uh, make it better to get the air out or burp the system, whatever. It's a fancy overflow jug. That's all it is. It looks cool. Dave polished it for me, so it looks really nice. It's in the very back. So, yeah, I mean, it works good. I like it. I'll see. Maybe if I can find the link for it, I'll put it down in the description. It's like T-U-F-F, Tough something or rather. Just Google Tough Swirl Tank DIY or something. You'll, you'll find it. It's, it's easy to find. All right, Sick Drew asked about maintenance and like what I take to the track. That could be a whole long video. I'll just do real high level. Maintenance normally before race, change oil, check spark plugs, change spark plugs. Every month or so, I'll probably do a leak down in the compression test on the motor just to make sure it's healthy. Um, just real quick on that and probably, you know, oil change, not every race, maybe every other, depends where with the methanol, it gets some moisture in there, that is part of the methanol, but we live in the desert, it's dry here, I don't get a lot of milking of the oil, so it's not bad. 
Obviously, I check all the bolts, um, you know, front suspension, rear suspension, drive shaft U joints. I'll visually check all my fittings and wipe them down, make sure they're staying clean. They look tight, they're good. Look for oil leaks. Check the converter bolts, make sure they're still tight. You know, quick, I can do a visual check on this car in just 10 minutes, really. I'll put a wrench on a lot of stuff to make sure it's still tight. But yeah, that's kind of my pre race routine, is, you know, Hoses, fittings, fuel lines, checking them, make sure they don't have residue, look like they're leaking, check all the suspension components, and just kind of go through that stuff. I'll spend a lot of time on the computer going through logs and making a tune-up for first round or testing for the race I'm going to. I like to do that ahead of time, so I'm ready to go once I get to the track. Clean the car, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of the pre-race check. I got, you know, kind of a checklist I go through, but high level, that's what I'm doing. And then I set the suspension up normally. You know, I don't plot it every time, but I'll go through and like back all the shocks off and count them and then set them back to where I think a good starting point is gonna be. I like to do all that at home before I go to the track. And then, you know, what do I bring to the track? Everything I can. That's the best thing I've learned is if you got spare parts, bring them. And you learn the more years you do this, what parts you're breaking or what could break and what's been an issue and it's left you stranded and you buy an extra and you take it to the track. I've gone to Dallas races more than I can count, break something on Friday night, and we're driving around Saturday all over DFW trying to find parts and get back to the track. So I just carry spares now. Coils, hoses, belts, oil, transmission fluid. I mean, anything you can think of, rear end fluid, all fluids, any belts you got, some extra hoses and connectors are good. I've ruined fittings at the track before. Vacuum lines good to have. Couplers are good to have. O-rings. I mean, just anything you can think of. Obviously, spark plugs. I mean, just oil filters. Just go through the whole list. Um, I even have a spare tire in my trailer. I've had a flat at the track once before during eliminations. You just, you never know. The more stuff you can have, I'd love to be able to have a converter, rear end gears, um, transmission. I, you know, I just, I'd love to be able to have all that. I, I'm working towards that. Just anything you can have, carry extra. Spare turbo, I'd love to have another turbo. Why not? Chris Clark, want to know the internals of the motor? Nothing secret, I mean, it's uh, pretty standard off the shelf parts. Uh, GM53 aluminum block. It is a uh, K1 crank, Molnar Power Plus rods, 3.62 stroke, and then it's a Wiseco forged pistons. Uh, CA625 head studs, that'd be one of the nicer things. It's not done to half inch head studs, they're still the 716 inch head studs, but they are the CA625s. LS9 head gaskets, pretty standard head gaskets, and then Brodick's BR1 Cathedral Port heads. The heads are, they're fancy heads. I got the heads because my hope was one day to build a legit short block, and then I'd be able to take like my heads and intake and put it over. I'd still love to do that. The crash kind of set me back, but hopefully maybe sometime later this year, I'll be able to build a legit short block to go with the rest of this, or yeah, hopefully maybe upgrade the turbo too at that time. I don't know, we'll see. Um, someone else asked, I don't remember who, someone else asked how me and Dave met. I don't know exactly how we met. It was, you know, probably three years ago. He had his Challenger. Um, he had, I was actually watching his YouTube before I actually met him. I don't know how I stumbled across it. I just think him and Kevin, you know, were here and people were talking, oh, they got the brothers, they got the YouTube channel. So I stumbled across David's channel, I think, first. Um, and he was shopping for his Challenger, actually, when I, uh, when I found him. And then he started doing bolt-ons. And then I had my vet at that time. And we just kind of saw each other at some car meets. He filmed some stuff at the Emerald Dragway when I had my red Corvette and was doing some racing here. And yeah, we just kind of started talking, hanging out. I helped him on his Challenger on some simple stuff, like he had some, the intercooler, he was doing air to water, or uh, ice tank, and I kind of helped with the pump and the flow and just kind of helped him dial that in and just super small stuff at the time. Um, and he, we actually raced back then. There's an untold story. We can't find the footage. Someone has the footage. Me and Dave raced. Um, I had a Cadillac, a CTSV, had heads cam, methanol injection on it. it. Made like 730 or something. I don't know what day. I think Dave made right at 800 at the time. Uh, they're both heavy cars. 
Um, I had air to water. I think this was before Dave had air to water. Um, I had air to water. I had a cooler of ice in my back seat, and I was going around racing people, driving around. I'd pull in the parking lot, drain the water, go grab a bag of ice from my back seat cooler, and put it in the back. Oh, it was great. But anyways, uh, we raced Dave. I had a passenger, and he was rowing out the window, and I lost. I lost. Dave beat me. Good job, Dave. Still hurts. But I got my revenge years later in the Trans Am. I raced his Mustang, and uh, there's plenty of footage of that on what happened. So, yeah. But anyway, so, yeah, me and Dave, just local car groups hanging out. I mean, we kind of, yeah, just kind of clicked. Like, we're both pretty hardcore gearheads and want to go fast and whatever. We're, we're motivated and devoted to doing it. So, that's kind of how, how we got going. Also, I'm not avoiding the questions. Um, I'm surprised no one really asked wait, times, none of those. Like, I was really surprised. You guys are slacking on your questions. But uh, I'm not avoiding the welding or the wiring questions. I'm starting wiring on this car. I'm actually was organizing it tonight, getting ready for wiring on it and going through, like, I'll have probably a week of going through the diagrams and the pinouts and just getting everything ready, mapped out in my head of how it's gonna work. Um, but I'm already filming for that. I'm gonna be doing tons of wiring, what brand wire I use, where I get it, battery wire, normal wire, sensors, uh, how I route it and make it look clean. All that's coming for that car. Hang tight. I'm not ignoring those questions. I'm, I'm gonna address that, tons of wiring questions. Just, I'm not ignoring it, it's just about to do them. Hang tight. And then I had a lot on the welding as well. What welder to get, how to weld titanium, how to weld stainless steel, not ignoring those either. I'm gonna do some dedicated welding videos. Uh, MIG welder, my MIG welder's down there. I need to go over it as well. But I'm gonna go over dedicated welding videos, kind of like I have to TIG weld stainless steel and just show you what I do. I'm by no means a professional. I'm self-taught, bought a welder myself, taught myself. But I get the job done, and I think I can relate to a lot of you that are trying to start. I didn't grow up welding. I taught myself, so I may be able to have some insight to help you guys out. And then welders, I'll go over like equipment and filler rod and gas. I use all argon for my TIG welder. I'll just get that out of the way. It's all argon. Um, my MIG machine is a mix like you normally got. I don't know what's a mix of CO2 and argon, maybe. I don't know. Um, but I'll, I'll go over all that, and uh, I think that kind of covers it on the q and I, I, I didn't want to drag this out too long. I got tons more questions, but I feel this covers the main ones that everyone was asking. Um, and yeah, it kind of gets us going. So I got uh, race content coming, racing one week from now, pretty much. So I'm gonna be going over this. I'm gonna plot the suspension. I may do a video on plotting the suspension and race prep, and then we're gonna have like a pre-race vlog. We're gonna have some race content, and then maybe a post-race recap. I'll have some of those videos. I may join it up to one. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film, but I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out on that. I got some people coming with me. We'll, we'll get some good footage. I'm excited to get out racing, that's for sure. Um, it's cold outside. We got like 12 inches of snow out there. I'm tired of being cooped up in the garage. I want to get to the racetrack with my friends and get to racing. So yeah, I mean, by all means, if you got more questions, just leave them down below. You just notice I'm active in the comments. I'm answering most. It actually pained me not to answer these questions and wait to do the video because I wanted to help the people out right then. So yeah, let me know. That's, that's what I'm about. I'll, I'll help you out where I can or answer your questions or yeah. But you guys really, really missed it. Should have been asking like horsepower, weight. I don't know if I would have answered them, but no one even asked them. Anyways, I think that wraps it up, you know? We're not gonna say the whole do this, do this, do this. We're just gonna end it with a have a nice day.